next speaker is Mike, and he'll be telling us about Circuit, the open source uh, IR compilers and toolchain. All right, thank you. So, yep, um, Mike, and I'm working at Sci Five. I've been involved in the Circuit project um, basically since it was open sourced, and that's what we will be talking about today. Um, so, in this talk, I'm going to kind of start with you know, why are we here? What are we talking about? Some of the challenges we face. Um, I'm going to try to get into how Circuit is hoping to address those challenges and hopefully show that Circuit is actually meeting those goals by walking through some real use cases, um, some things we've done with Circuit, and then I'll kind of wrap it up and talk about how we can all move forward together. OK, so why are we all here? Um, hardware design is easy, right? When I got started, at least it seemed that way. You describe your system with maybe a hardware description language. Perhaps you write a test bench and simulate it with some tools, or you write some synthesis constraints and synthesize it for an FPGA or an ASIC. Um, the reality is a lot more complex than that. In the real world, um, if you want to tape out a chip or, or scale up a large FPGA system, um, there's a lot of aspects that all have to work together. And this involves both people and tools. And, and so teams need to work together. Tools need to work together. And this is, I think, one of the challenges we face here um, you know, in the open source silicon community and really in, in any hardware design endeavor. Um, so, so how can we try to address this and make these things fit together nicely in a scalable way? That's, that's what we're going to try to talk about today. Um, I think one way to look at this is kind of as a compiler problem. Um, so I'm talking about compiler infrastructure for hardware today. I don't want to go too deep into you know, compiler specifics, but it's important to think about one thing from compilers, which is intermediate representations, IRs. Um, this is how compilers represent information, how they capture design intent. Um, you know, we saw just in the last talk how Hammer has the Hammer IRs to capture information through their flows, and I think that's kind of the idea we're trying to take with Circuit, is that you can use compiler solutions for problems like this. Um, so there was a great talk from Chris Latner at Ask Plus 2021 where he kind of talks about the golden age of compilers. Um, one of the things that he pointed out in the beginning was kind of a history lesson about LLVM and what we saw with C compilers in the 90s, early 2000s. Um, and that kind of looked a lot like this. There's a lot of kind of islands of tools that you have to stitch together. And I think LLVM was able to really rally a large community around its IRs and build a lot of really cool um, new features that m might not have been possible. So we're going to look at how we can do that for hardware, how we can build IRs, build uh, better integrations for tools. So I think you know, there, there are a couple things that we can do by building out better IRs for hardware. Right, um, right now, Tools have to kind of communicate with each other through Verilog. So say what you want about Verilog as a language. Um, it is not a great intermediate representation for capturing design intent. Um, so if you want to go and actually tape out a chip, like we just saw, there's all these tickle files that you have to get. And um, other little sub-languages, so, so your full picture, your, your whole design intent of what you're actually describing is not just your RTL. It's all these other things. Um, and they're not really coupled together very well. So you end up with problems where, oh, I changed my Verilog. I need to go find all the scripts. I need to go update. Um, it's not really robust. So if we have better IRs that can capture all of that design intent together, um, we can start to improve. And, and, and this is something that will benefit the tooling. And I think our, our whole open source ecosystem of tools can benefit from better IRs by kind of sharing a common infrastructure, being able to integrate with something that has a little bit more um, well, well-defined semantics, a little less crazy semantics than Verilog, um, that will enable more robust, more scalable integrations. And tools won't have to you know, parse and print Verilog and deal with all of these common things. OK, so. This is why I think we need IRs. I want to focus on a couple different sort of personas as we go through the talk about how, um, who can benefit. So there's you know, people using the tools, engineers, architects, um, people doing PD or verification. 
um, will of course benefit from having better tools, but I also want to speak to people who are developing tools. I mean, there, there are people creating hardware description languages all in this room, or synthesis tools, or um, verification tools, and I think we can all uh, benefit by having a, a stronger foundation for tooling. So um, if all of that works out, then we get better designs. Our end users, of course, are happy. So this is kind of the framing we're going to take as we look at what the circuit project can provide. Um, so what is circuit in the box? Um, you get an open source compiler infrastructure for hardware design. Um, so this is building on top of LLVM and the MLIR infrastructure. So I'm not going to go too deep on what MLIR is, but we use it. It's great. It's a great way to build open source IRs. Um, so Circuit contains different definitions of IRs for different aspects of hardware design, and um, you know, kind of modular library-based tools for connecting them together and doing things with them, um, much in the spirit of LLVM. So the goal is to kind of start build an e building an ecosystem around that. Um, OK, so now I'm going to walk through kind of some of the actual concrete um, IRs that Circuit provides. So this is kind of what compiler infrastructure looks like from a really zoomed out picture. Um, there are each of those boxes is a different IR that we represent. And um, the arrows kind of show how you can flow through the compiler and do different things. Um, in the middle, we have this kind of waistline of core dialects that represent um, you know, hardware designs at close to the RTL level, but at a higher level than Verilog with a little bit more specific semantics. And, and I'll talk about those in a sec. Um, so this is kind of the overview. I'm going to talk about now specifically some of the dialects um, and what we can do with them. So this is the one example of IR I'm going to show today. You don't really need to know the syntax of what it is, but it's, this is what MLIR looks like if you haven't seen it before. Um, and this is, these are circuits core IRs. So we represent things like modules and hierarchy. We represent combinational logic, sequential logic. Um, and each of these IR constructs has a well-defined semantics. It's all hopefully designed to be orthogonal and composable um, in a way that, you know, something like Verilog might not be. So this is the, the kind of waistline that we try to get everything using circuit into. And we do a ton of optimizations here, transformations, um, and interesting analyses. Um, so from these IRs, one of the most important transformations we do is actually exporting system Verilog. You know, I just said we don't love using system Verilog as the kind of IR that we transfer between all these tools. But the reality is that's how it works today. And circuit can take away the pain of needing to deal with that by abstracting over it. If you can use something that gets into circuit's IRs, circuit will take care of transforming them and massaging them into the Verilog output that your tool speaks, whether it's you know, something specific for Yosis or Verilator or commercial tools. Um, we have things to work around bugs in Vivado, things like that. So there are um, a lot of things that the, ex the Verilog export will take care of for you, so you don't have to worry about all that minutia. You can focus on getting your design intent into uh, the compiler and then let, let it take care of the rest for you. OK, so moving beyond kind of the core and the export to Verilog, um, there's sort of these other mid-level IRs that provide integration points. Um, so the first one, and I think the oldest, is Fertile. So Fertile is the IR for Chisel. Um, it's really great in that it has a version spec, and that's something that we uh, rely on. So Circuit built um, a replacement Fertile compiler that um, we were able to actually kind of hot swap compilers at Sci-5 from the old one to the new Circuit-based one um, because Chisel was built around an IR. So this is you know the power we we get from having IRs. And that project really helped build out a lot of the core functionality in Circuit. Um, so Fertile kind of meets Chisel where it is and then brings the design intent into Circuit's core IRs and then is you know, further exported to Verilog. So that, that whole flow um, from Chisel to Fertile through Circuit's dialects to Verilog helped flush out a lot of the early pain points and helped inform the design of 
what kind of those generic core IRs should look like. Um, but that's not the only thing. So we have um, IRs for representing dynamically scheduled data flow. Um, so we call it handshake because it's kind of these handshaking building blocks that you can clip together to build a um, representation of your design. There are some interesting things we can do at this level, a lot of cool transformations and analyses, um, design spaces to explore and whatnot. Um, we also have kind of alongside and separate from Handshake, um, an IR called ESI for Elastic Silicon Interconnect. And that represents kind of this notion of handshaking but at interface boundaries. Um, and the ESI tooling provides some really cool things like co-simulation, um, BSPs that can be generated for different actual devices out of the box. That's something that's very new but is being worked on. Um, so both of these are able to represent you know, their notion of dynamic data flow, handshaking, whatever they want to capture, that design intent, um, and then convert it into circuits core IRs and get you know, robust Verilog and, and all of the optimizations and transformations for free. Um, so for things that are in this kind of dynamic data flow world, you can meet circuit at these IRs and take advantage of the rest of the stack. Um, kind of on the other side of the coin, we also do stuff with static scheduling. Um, so we have dialects that represent pipelines, pipelines that have been scheduled and have a known data path and you know, a, a set schedule. Um, we can capture that in circuit. We also kind of interface with Calyx, which um, I guess isn't always statically scheduled, but Calyx has an interesting representation of separating the data path from the description of the control schedule and um, Circuit has a Calyx IR that can kind of interoperate with the whole Calyx ecosystem. It can bring things in and run the low-level optimizations. It can also um, take things out and uh, do stuff with Calyx. And so we have the ability to go from these representations to our core IRs again and uh, take advantage of all the low-level transformations and uh, Verilog export. Um, the last thing I just want to touch on related to, to the topic of scheduling is we also have a whole library of um, scheduling infrastructure. So this represents scheduling problems um, and then solves them. And you can use the solution to then go and construct um, IR. So we can take untimed things, maybe coming from an HLS flow, and schedule them with resource constraints and time them. Um, we can also do things like retiming pipelines, or um, you know, if you have some physical need to put down a register, you can retime around that using this kind of infrastructure. Um, so those are a few of the kind of mid-level IRs that you can, and things you can do at Circuit above just RTL. Um, now I want to walk through some of the concrete use cases, and hopefully we can see how they've been able to benefit the various uh, communities. Um, so the first one I want to talk about is Chisel. Um, I, I know there's going to be a chisel talk from Jack coming up right after this. Um, the interesting thing is because it's using this version Fertile IR, we were able to replace it um, with an implementation in circuit that is uh, you know, faster in terms of runtime, uses less memory, and actually does more work. It, it does more aggressive optimizations um, by making that switch and um, updating Chisel to use the circuit-based Fertile compiler, uh, you know, the whole Chisel community gets to benefit. Um, so this is kind of one win for, you know, building around IRs, building an ecosystem around an IR. It enables these kind of improvements. Um, another project that is kind of been involved in circuit from the start um, is PyCDE, so Python Circuit Design Entry. It's kind of like Chisel, where it's a um, generator. It's a program that you run that generates hardware. Um, it makes use of that ESI dialect I mentioned, um, as well as the core IRs. And so it's able to do some really interesting things, and it's kind of deeply integrated with Circuit from the start. So um, one of the problems that you have is, you know, I think I mentioned, if you say change your Verilog and you have to go update some tickle scripts, um, one of the things that PyCDE enables is placement-aware logic design, I, I guess I would call it, where the 
designer is able to capture both the logic as well as physical design information from the generator program. And that exists all together in the IR, kind of tightly coupled, so that the Verilog and the tickle are generated. Um, rather than having to go tweak things as you change them, you, you tweak your source program, you get a different IR, the compiler will generate um, tickle that matches your RTL. So that's really cool. Um, there are some other things that PyCDE can do um, related to sort of system design and integration. It uses ESI so that, or it, it can use ESI. Um, and there's some tooling to basically allow you to do your system integration from Python. Um, and it uses ESI under the hood to generate COSIM wrappers and um, BSP, excuse me, BSPs and things like that. Um, so that's another project that kind of grew up with Circuit from the beginning. It's been built in Circuit the whole time. Um, aside from those HDL type things, there's a lot of other open source projects um, that I think are investigating Circuit. And we, you know, we periodically hear from folks in different communities that are interested in, you know, I can target Circuit instead of emitting Verilog or um, writing my own transformations and optimizations. Um, so this is something that we're really excited about. We're seeing more and more interest, and we want to, to have that continue to grow. So I'm um, looking forward to being here and getting to meet even more people. Um, I think if you're developing a new hardware description language, I would, I would be really curious to see if there's a dialect, an IR, and circuit that would make sense for you to use. A um, <clears throat> couple more use cases moving along, um, kind of away from hardware description. There's also the whole high-level synthesis camp. Um, circuit, I mentioned, has kind of dynamically scheduled representations as well as static timed pipeline representations. Um, so there are different things you can do with HLS and Circuit. Um, this is something I've looked at a little bit. Basically, any project that's built on MLIR and can get kind of MLIR into Circuit, you can try to take through these different um, HLS flows and um, you can use like the ESI stuff to provide COSIM around the design that you, you built with HLS. You can use the BSPs to go put it on an FPGA in the cloud and things like that. Um, so there's been a lot of really interesting research around HLS and circuit and um, things like that. Um, kind of looking ahead, I mean, one of the things I, I was harping on is how we don't love communicating design intent via system Verilog, but that is in fact what we do. I talked about how much effort we put into exporting Verilog. So I think one of the big things that you know the community um, wants to do moving forward into 2023 is really replace, not replace, but build out new tooling that uses circuit natively. So the ability to simulate circuit-based designs um, at various levels of representation, the ability to start doing synthesis and other physical design activities from Circuit's core IRs. Um, it would be great, for example, if we could take from Circuit's IRs into, um, you know, hammer IRs and, the, and go through that whole flow um, without ever having, I mean, at the end of the day, the, the tools today consume Verilog, but we really want to get to a world where we can do some of this stuff natively within Circuit. Um, so there's been a lot of interest recently in um, building out some of these tools around Circuit's IRs rather than Verilog, and that's super exciting. That's what we want to see. Um, so just to kind of step back and, and tie it together, um, I think the hardware design ecosystem can benefit from IRs and open source IRs for hardware design. Um, it enables tools, flows, and really teams to integrate around a more um, solid, well-defined infrastructure. And hopefully, if we can get this right, it will lead to sort of network effects where um, the community grows and feeds back into circuit, and that can benefit um, other parts of the community as well. So again, we're trying to really take the approach that LLVM took of providing modular, library-based tools and growing an ecosystem around them. Um, so just if you want to get involved, um, you can try one of the HDLs that uses Circuit. You can, um, if you're working on the tools, you can work on integrating your tools with Circuit. Um, we have, you know, website, GitHub. We have a discourse and Discord channel for kind of quick chats. 
Um, and we meet weekly every Wednesday, and those meetings are totally open. Um, it's a great place to just pop in, even if you have a half-baked thought or a whole conference talk you want to give, um, anyone's welcome. So just to wrap up, uh, I want to say thank you to the organizers for putting this together and um, to you all for listening. And of course, I want to thank the circuit community. Um, you know, I'm the one talking today, but there are a lot of people who put effort into this project. Um, so yeah, I think I have time for some questions now and would be happy to uh, chat in the hallway as well. So thank you. Thanks, Mike. Um, May I have the first question? The uh, organizer privileges. Um, <laughs> so, this is fantastic. Um, I think the main thing for from the point of view of a Chisel user for a long time is that we're moving to a like a C plus plus executable to do the fertile processing and generation of a system Verilog. It, it's a lot quicker. Um, am I right in thinking that the approach is really you need a bundle of IRs to ultimately do this job instead of previous efforts which you know thought that maybe you needed one IR to rule them all. In reality, you need a number. Is, is that sort of the approach? Yeah, I think, I think that's exactly right. And if I go back um, to our kind of overview of all the IRs we have, um, it's not just one IR to rule them all. And I think we, we see that it doesn't always work out when you try to do that. And this is why um, I didn't really talk about the MLIR infrastructure, but it's designed to enable multiple the ML stands for multiple levels of IR that can all coexist and, and tightly integrate. Um, and so that's, that's what we're hoping to realize in, in the circuit project is, you know, if you want sequential logic, here's an IR for different kinds of sequential logic. And that will compose with the IR for combinational logic and things like that. Yeah, that's great. And one other quick question. ESI, where do I find more information about that? Yeah, good question. Um, I think. I might have missed putting a link, but there was a talk at Latte, um, the workshop at ASPLOS, um, two years ago now. Um, and it's also, yeah, I can, I can share some links. It was also mentioned in, um, there was a Hot Chips tutorial about Circuit last year um, that kind of gets into the ESI stuff. Is this a Circuit specific thing or was it sort of developed outside or is, is it like a... Um, it's circuit specific. I think it was okay. being developed right when circuit was created and, and quickly decided, okay, I'm going to do this within circuit. Cool. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Mike. This is on. All right. Uh, so first, as a testimonial, your work has been really great. We've had designs that previously with the Fertile compiler would time out, and now they compile and generate Verilog in like five minutes. So that has been amazing. Um, an actual question, though, uh, are you, is there going to be support for out of tree passes in circuit? Ah, that's an interesting question. So the way this normally works with MLIR projects is you take a dependency on circuit in kind of a normal MLIR project with, you know, your LLVM layout and you would write um, your passes and it, the trick is you need to integrate them into circuits pipelines. And so to enable that kind of use case Right now, we kind of have monolithic pipelines where the, the fertile route kind of goes through one pipeline and it's not super extensible. Um, the HLS route is the same thing. So I think building out, a, it's just a little bit of engineering work to say, okay, here's a point where you can add your, your um, transformations or analyses. It's totally doable. So yeah, if you have use case for um, out of tree um, transformations, analysis, any of that stuff, um, definitely we can work on providing those extension points where they make sense. Uh, thanks, Mike. <clears throat> um, I carry around the soapbox and I'm going to get up on it again. Uh, for, for open source simulation, um, there's really two things I think are missing. One of them is mixed language, and this is like a huge part of the solution for that problem. Um, I can imagine like getting in the HDL, getting in Verilog into a common basis and then simulating them. The other thing that we're missing is unfortunately encrypted IP support. It's like this stink bomb in the middle of this box here and it's not clear how to handle it, if it can be handled at all. A any, any, anything? It's not, s encrypted IP is not something I've thought about. I'm not sure if it's something the circuit community has been thinking about yet. Um, I'm not sure how tools handle those, but I think if we want to build out simulators, that's a problem we'd have to solve, but I, I don't have a great answer yet. Uh, hey, I like. I really like the 
point you touched on on uh, capturing design intent as primarily a front-end designer, one thing that kind of always frustrated me about the current state of things is we have our HDL, our RTL design on one hand, and then, oh, by the way, put your timing constraints somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, do you ever foresee a future where that can get unified uh, into something like this or some kind of HDL language? Yeah, I think that's something that we're really interested in working on. Um, you know, from the angle of Chisel, I think there are possibilities there um, that we're starting to explore. Jack's going to give a talk and show kind of some of the future things of Chisel. Um, and, you know, it's something that also in other projects, the PyCDE project um, built some cool tooling for this notion of placement to wear logic design. I, I forget exactly the term they use, but it's capturing the design intent of not just the logic, but where it needs to go. And I want these registers to be spaced according to this grid or something like that. And, and so, yeah, um, we want to capture that. And, and one of the things I kind of skimmed over is there's a lot of non-RTL information that needs to be captured. And um, this is something I'm working on now is kind of building out IRs that can capture things that aren't just RTL, but integrate with the RTL so that you can do things like emit your constraints um, from one source of truth. Does that make sense? Uh, question here, uh, over there. Um, thanks for the talk. Um, question on system Verilog input, so front end part. So that, I think that's on the top right corner. I can't really read it, but I, I'm assuming that's yeah. SV slash SBHDL. Yeah. Um, how far is that support? How well does it work? So w the history here is there's um, the more compiler which was originally implemented in uh, Rust, and bits and pieces have been slowly being ported into the more IR and circuit. Um, it is not very far along, and, and there is, there's kind of two tracks of work there. So one is kind of taking the more compiler and, and moving its uh, IRs from Rust into circuit and porting functionality. Another angle that um, actually the guy who wrote more is looking into is using um, slang or slang, I, f I forget how it's pronounced, which I think is um, another open source kind of Verilog and taking that in as our Verilog ingest route. And that's also very early prototype. So it's something we're interested in. It's not something that is uh, usable today. Um, yeah, thank you for the great effort. And do you know of any um, tool vendors which are like considering integrating um, the IR? Um, let's see. We had at our open design meeting um, someone from Vivado simulation team came by, and I think was showing some interest. Um, I don't know too much about any other efforts, but I think once we can show some kind of within circuit native support for simulation or synthesis or something, I think that might be an opportunity for the uh, proprietary vendors to get more excited. Um, so you generate system bearer log. What does your generated system bearer log look like? Is it something that a human can read or is it something that, you know, a human will be um, ashamed to look at type thing? Yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's a tough one. Um, we try very hard to generate human readable system Verilog that also is machine readable in the sense that different tools have different requirements. Sometimes we can't use system Verilog at all. Um, so we have a lot of flags and switches to control that. Um, we fairly recently got a new um, pretty printing implementation for the Verilog export that can do a lot of really interesting line breaking and formatting kind of structurally in a nice way. Um, one of the challenges we constantly struggle with is providing good identifiers. Anytime you have to kind of auto-generate a wire for reasons in the compiler, you get a kind of meaningless wire name. And getting good identifiers all the way into the output is one of the challenges that we're, we're doing a lot better with and um, continue to improve on. Um, and does your system bear log output also include like where something came from, like source line identifiers and yeah. these type of things? So this is what our actual system Verilog looks like. I, I, it's a really simple example, and I made sure that there would be nice identifiers. But um, one thing I did is I stripped out those because they didn't quite fit on the screen. Um, but yes, we provide source locators. Um, Jack will show in the next talk 
some of the cool things that that enables for Chisel. Um, but yes, we do have source locators and we, we work really hard to make them um, accurate. And have you connected this to the open road, um, you know, ASIC stuff at all? Um, not personally. That's a project I would love to try. Um, we have we have interest in that. I think um, one of the open road folks came to the circuit open meeting and, and talked and we said, this is great. We should work together. I don't know if anyone has actually gone and done that. But um, definitely there's interest. Hi. Um, I have a question about for the simulation. So on the core IR, do you, if I were having an input that is very low, and it will be more behavioral, not synthesizable, is the core IR has to be extended to support that? Will it support? And then do you have support the two value logic or four value logic or yeah, what, good, what do you have there? Good question. A uh, couple questions there. So just quickly in the core IRs, we basically let you choose if you want two value logic or other. Um, we haven't built out support for correctly handling other. We just don't, we disable certain transformations um, that wouldn't be legal in four value or nine value logic. Um, in terms of dealing with behavioral things, there are a couple approaches. Um, the core IRs do not represent behavioral constructs, so they represent sequential elements in a, a more high level way. There's like an IR construct that says this is a register or this is a FIFO, and it kind of declares its behavior so that it's easier to um, deal with in, in a simulator. And we are interested in simulating at that level. We are also interested in kind of event-driven, low-level, more system Verilog modeling. Um, and we would have different IRs and different simulator tools for each level. Um, I think that was where I was trying to mention very briefly. Um, when I talk about ARC simulator, that's kind of, that, that simulates at the level of register transfer ARCs. Um, we are also looking into the sort of low-level event-based simulator for dealing with, like, if we were to ingest Verilog, for example, and deal with behavioral constructs, it would be at that event-driven simulator, I think. What about verification um, constructs like asserts and things like that? Yep, so um, I think I kind of skimmed over it, but as kind of related to the core IRs is we do have a system Verilog IR that represents system Verilog specific things in a first class way. So we, we try to keep the core IRs kind of this clean semantic model of hardware that's easy to optimize and transform and reason about, um, which system Verilog is not. So we have an IR that represents all of the yucky realities of system Verilog like asserts and um, you know the whole SVA family of operations. And so something like Chisel or PyCDE, if it wants to use those, it can go straight to the system Verilog dialect. And that integrates well with the kind of pristine core IRs in, in like a cohesive way. Awesome, let's thank Mike one more time. Thank you.